Welcome to the ultimate Gondor guide for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the page 2.22. Making this guide was very time consuming, so I would appreciate it if you leave a like to this video. And also let me know which faction we should cover in the next video in the comment section down below. Before further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's address the strength and the weaknesses of the Gondor faction first. On a scala from 1 to 10, Gondor's early game is a 6, mid game a 5 and late game a 8. With the second strongest infantry and the option to choose between the Elven Wood and the heal from the spellbook, you can get some great results in the early game. Mid game Gondor can also be very strong, as you have the chance to have very early upgrades on your knights. But the Steeble and also the Knights of Gondor are very expensive and if your early game goes poorly, your mid game won't go super well either. In late game, Gondor fully unleashes with the best power points, the best hero and the best defense in the game. Even though your army cannot really match any other faction's army, your power points and trebuchet definitely can. Now let's jump into the build order in power point choices. As the build order can change depending on the map you are playing on and the faction you are playing against, we will assume that you are playing a 1v1 on the map Forts of Eisen and that your opponent has picked random. We will start the game by building up a blacksmith and a farm and recruiting Pippin. The blacksmith start is extremely important as it does not only provide us resources but also works as an armory at the same time. In order to buy upgrades, it has to reach level 2. For that reason, we have to build it at the start of the game. The farms will grant us the food bonus, reducing the cost of our primary units, the Gondor Knights. Now, now, we will have to wall check to figure out if you are facing against an evil or a good faction. If you want to know how to wall check, I've already made a tutorial video about that, I will leave a link in the description down below. It looks like we are against the evil faction, so we rush with our two soldiers forward and use the hobbit to capture our settlements. We don't want to choose any power point until we see the faction of our opponent. We are against Isengard. You will have to choose the Elvin Wood as the Urukai with Warchant are too strong to face against and can kill our two soldiers even with the heal. Our Elvin Wood does not only provide us the 35% increased armor, but most importantly it nullifies the enemy leadership bonuses. Please keep in mind that enemy has only no leadership as long as they fight on our Elvin Wood. The dream is to destroy the enemy lumber mill, which Isengard will try to defend. If we realize that we can't destroy it, we need to focus down the lumber mill workers instead, in fighting against the Urukai. After capturing the two outside settlements with our hobbit, we can also send Pippin forward. His mission is to kill some other workers to generate pressure on our opponent. After the blacksmith and farm in our castle and the two outside farms we have, we want to build another farm in our castle to have a greater cost reduction on our Gondor Knights and save for 800 to build up the stable. To complete the build order, here is how you should build with the Gondor faction. Blacksmith, farm, hobbit, two outside farms, one extra farm in the castle, stable, knight, another knight, well, and multiple blacksmiths, third Gondor Knight, knight shields, forge blades, heavy armor. The reason why we are building this many blacksmiths is because of this steel bonus which grants us cost reduction on our upgrades. We want to use the very first Gondor Knight to destroy the enemy lumbering mills. With the second knight we can creep as many layers as we potentially can to increase our power points. Our power point choices can look like this. Start with the Elven Wood, skip the hill, save up for 3 power points to get the Great Company, which is crucial to deal with the enemy pikemen and rush the enemy castle. If we can't get this many power points, we can also choose hill, destroy one of our farms inside the castle to build up the barracks. Soldiers are a great and also a cheap counter to enemy pikemen. If our opponent tries to counter our move with the War Riders, we can counter his move by recruiting Tower Guards. In the patch 2.2, you can even combine soldiers with Tower Guards for our ultimate infantry combination. The Great Company loses its impact the longer the game goes on. If we can't unlock it early, we won't achieve too much with it in the late game, but we will still need them to have the chance to reach the Eagle Alliance Special Summon, which is a massive power spike for the Gondor faction. Eagles with their speed and damage, especially versus enemy heroes, can be definitely game changing. The main goal of the Eagles is to kill enemy lords, so our Gandalf can finally approach the enemy army to blast the Uruks into the next dimension. This matchup requires lots of micro, as losing any of our Gondor Knights will cost us a lot of momentum and speed. For that reason, do not take risky fights. And do not recruit more knights than you can micro. It is definitely better to properly micro with 3 Gondor Knights instead of having 5 but losing 2 of them continuously. Like in every matchup with every faction map control is everything. Multitasking and macro are very rewarding and while you rush the enemy castle with your Gondor Knights, your soldiers can take over the map. If you are feeling wealthy and you would like to feel even more wealthy, you can also build up the marketplace and purchase all the upgrades and demolish it right after. In the patch 2.2 you don't have to keep your marketplace to keep your upgrades. You might reach the time in which your army can't fight against Isengard anymore. When this time comes, your best bet are trebuchet, which you can recruit from your workshop. Trebuchet, as well as other ranged siege weapons, are a great way of dealing with low mobility units like Urukai crossbowmen combos and can generate a lot of power points and help us to reach the army of the dead, which, when used correctly, can win us the game. If your opponent didn't pick random but pre picked the Isengard faction, you can also start with the blacksmith and the barracks. This opening will have much more early game presence but will also delay.
basically your stable in Gondor Knights. Like mentioned before, we always need a blacksmith in the early game. And like the blind and safe opening we had in the, our first example, we won't use our hobbit to capture the settlements this time, but join our two starting soldiers to have a greater push power. Our build order goes like this. Blacksmith, into barracks, into one soldier, demolish the barracks and use the soldier we recruited to capture the outside settlements. Then follow up with the same build order we mentioned in the first example. You can also blindly open with a barracks as Gondor, but keep in mind that if you can't achieve success with it, it will cost you lots of time and delay your stable in Gondor Knights quite a bit. Your start versus Isengard can also apply versus Mordor. Mordor is not a very strong early game faction, which means you need to punish Mordor early. Don't allow him to creep any lair nor keep any lumber mills until his trolls arrive. Try to creep all lairs in the map to get your great company, which can easily kill the trolls when they have no drama troll leadership. While dealing with the pikes can be tough, dealing with mountain trolls of the Mordor faction is still way harder, as they are not only faster compared to pikemen, but also tankier versus cavalry. If you didn't have a great start versus Mordor, your best bet would be to skip the great company and upgrades and rush Gan of the Wild. In this matchup, you definitely will need to recruit rangers in Boromir as well as Faramir. Gondor's faction lacks of damage leadership, that's why getting Boromir to level 4 is crucial versus Mordor. Do not clump in one location with all your rangers as trolls deal massive splash damage. Split them up and focus the trolls simultaneously, other than one by one. Also in this matchup, Eagles can be extremely impactful as they deal massive magic damage which pierces through the armor of trolls and kill them with only one or two hits. Try to shut down Mordor in the early game as it's close to be impossible to maintain a great map control versus two Nazgûs and the Witch King in the lead game. Stormworker, Battle Tower upgrade and Great Gandalf Micro are definitely needed in this matchup. Unlike versus Isengard or Mordor, you want to play defensively versus Rohan, which has the best early game out of all four factions. Even though your soldiers with heal are way stronger than peasants, the spam of Rohan can be still very overwhelming. Try to keep your outside settlements protected as losing them would delay your stable and with the lack of food bonus make your knights nearly unaffordable. Creep defensively with your knights and try to get at least 3 war players on the map for Isaac. Start with the heal power point and try to collect 2 more power points to unlock the Gan of the White spell. You should be able to get upgrades faster than Rohan, which means there will be a small window in which you would and should maintain the map control and dominate the map. With no map control, Rohan will be very weak and in order to dominate the map, you will need as many knights as your opponent has Rohirrim. Sieging with Trebuchet alone won't be that effective, as the Rohirrim can one-shot your Trebuchet. You will need Boromir to counter Aragorn by knocking him down on the ground, and Tower Guards to protect your siege weapons versus Rohirrim. If Rohan has a great map control and manages to get Elma to level 4, you will start losing slowly the map control. Rohirrim marches with double leadership of Elma, and Theodin can almost one-shot your Gandalf. Do not approach them when your heal is on cooldown. Build the marketplace and start recruiting combos and Tower Guards. Your combos are your only bet to win continuously versus the Rohirrim archers. Do not pick eagles when your opponent has too many Rohirrim archers and go for Cloudbreak instead. The fastest way of reaching the army of the dead is heal, Gan of the White and Cloudbreak. Do not feed your trebuchet as they cost lots of resources and feed lots of power points to the opponent player. Alright, now we have come to the end of the Gondor guide and I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that it was educational and helpful. If I forget about something, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching, I hope to see you all in the next video and until then keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out boys. And so it shall be once more! Yeah!